To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 21, They Call Me Isaac. Isaac was born as part of the Elohim Yahweh Abraham deal. Do as I say and I'll reward you with the whole people from your seed, the Hebrew people. And as every journey begins with one step, the Hebrew people begin with one Abrahamic descendant, Yitzhak, meaning he will laugh because his parents giggled when God told the elderly couple they'd soon have a baby. So Isaac's very existence was a divine miracle. 1,000 years before the Christian virgin birth of Christ, there was the menopausal birth of Yitzhak. So Yitzhak is the second Hebrew patriarch quite an important position for a character that is so lame he has none of his dad's gravitas nor his own son's street smarts Yitzhak is clearly lacking in this episode we'll talk about the less than stellar writing of Isaac's character and what it reveals about the biblical author's process of creating the Abrahamic dynasty let's dive in hi Omri hi Gil and we want to give a massive shout out to Faryal Khan, a new member of the show. Thank you, Faryal, for supporting our project. Khan mm-hmm. or oh, Khan? Khan. Khan. Thank you. Okay, Isaac, Yitzhak. Uh, it's funny that you said in your intro, I liked it, that you say it's uh, a part of the Abraham Yahweh Elohim deal. Because the mm-hmm. Elohim and uh, Yahweh deal, it's kind of the, uh, they made a connection between these two deities to suit uh, their political needs at the time, at the context of uh, these stories uh, when they were put on writing. And Isaac is also kind of a, a Elohim Yahweh deal in a sense that it, some scholars believe that Isaac is like the connection between the Abrahamic lineage, tradition, and the people that he is the father figure of, and Jacob, mm. Isaac's son. And uh, when you look at it like that, Ooh. and then look at Isaac's character, and the story, and then read the story, oh. then it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's like season two of the Abraham yeah. uh, series, in which in the season one, you had very strong moments, uh, like let's say that even repeated itself in season one. <laughs> let's face it, like the, the, the point with the sister the wife. With the sister wife. We'll talk about it soon. But the, and and there was also a magical birth and yeah. fighting over whales and being respected by the people around you. Yeah. And then Isaac. And Isaac. then like they, you had like a creative <laughs> meeting of staff writers. They wanted to take the show into a different, uh, more sinister, dark place. <laughs> but then came the marketing guys. And they said, well, people like the part when he does the old switcheroo with, with the wife and the, and the, and sister. the sister. They yeah, like that when you have uh, <laughs> famine in the land and you need to go uh, to another place. Well, let's work on that. Yes. So maybe they had to fire the writers and get a new staff of writers that you just probably killed them. Back then you didn't. Uh, <laughs> because, okay, it's the exact everything that happens to Isaac, almost everything that is directly related to Isaac, happened already with Abraham yeah it's exactly the same thing there's yeah. nothing new and just the way that it starts I feel like this is you know architecture was more primitive back then so they didn't yet have the architectural knowledge to build a fourth wall <laughs> <laughs> between the writers and the audience because they, it begins with so there was a famine in the land, but not the other famine that we told you before with Abraham. This is a different famine. Yeah, we like to say here in the podcast that uh, when you see in ancient storytelling, when you see mm. a trope, it mm. not necessarily means that uh, the story was copied and uh, how can the people who heard that story didn't tell themselves that, uh, oh, I heard that story, it sounds very familiar. No, when you see a trope in ancient storytelling, it emphasized the point that it's probably true. Yeah. But here they took it to another <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm yes. not standing by that statement okay yeah, yeah so in the previous chapters there was some great writing not all of it because okay Abraham we, we mentioned it wasn't a super defined character but he had some traits and you could imagine how he feels you could feel what he feels with his son both his sons uh, here this is just like it's subpar related to the writing that comes before and after in terms of creativity. It's like they're yeah. not even trying. They're yeah. not even trying. 
let's get a little bit into the details in terms of what happens to Isaac. Once he buried his dad, there is a famine. So this also happened uh, with Abraham, and that's why Abraham went to Egypt. And then he said his wife is actually his sister because he didn't want them to take his uh, wife. And then he's like, oh my God, you're so strong and uh, godlike, and you have this, uh, you, uh, God has your back, Yahweh, so why didn't you tell me that uh, yeah. your sister is actually your wife? Yeah. So exactly the same thing here. Twice it appears this. Uh, with Abraham. Yeah, once, so this once in Gorar. Uh, yeah, with, with Abimelech, with Abimelech. The, the, the king father, the father, father king. king. Yeah. So again, yeah. the same the character same with the same Sarzvot, the same general. I'm guessing this Abimelech is like, oh no, again this crazy family <laughs> that tells me that uh, their wives are their sisters and uh, it's, it's either, I don't know, I can imagine it also like, uh, like he is a character in like this futuristic matrix like world and he is forced like in a groundhog day scenario yeah, to, reenact. to reenact oh i you say that this is your sister i believe <laughs> you somebody take her oh no this happened to me again and yeah. it's just like he has to say it compare this is like whatever he's inferno or yeah. hell or something or maybe if you hear that story, uh, when you hear the name of Imelech, it's not exactly a name. It's more like yeah. a pharaoh. You yeah. know, it's like a Could king be. of Hittites of that area. The king of Gar is a Vimelech, maybe. Right? Yeah. I, I think it's uh, more probable uh, because then you will need to explain why he lived so long. Yeah, because Abraham because lived very long. Abraham lived very long and Isaac is already 40 in this story. Yes. So. And he doesn't remember that it happened before, so it could it might as well be a new character. Yeah, he's like, ah, this is your sister. Okay, so some people take her, and then, uh, So God came to Avimelech yeah. in his dream in the night <laughs> and told him, "You are dead <laughs> because you took this wife that belongs to another man." And another thing about the name of Avimelech, sorry. Mm -hmm. It well can maybe that it's like uh, Avimelech the third, you know, you had yeah, Tiglat yeah, yeah. Palsar the third, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. whatever the Darius the, the second. And right. The Bible doesn't really put uh, Nabuchadnezzar was the second, I think, the one right. that destroyed. Right. And then they don't put the numbers there. They don't put the numbers, and especially in this book, in Genesis, uh, the history is very flimsy. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not meant to be people that you can actually identify. It's not hardcore history. It's yes. more like a, a vision of ancient times that it's probably correct. It's In probably correct. Yeah. And, and by the way, the, the reason that Isaac says that uh, Rivka's sister is again like with Sarah because she's beautiful. Yeah. So he, he's given back his wife. She was almost... Okay, this is, this is also funny. And also the, the translation is funny. And then Avimelech, the king of the Philistines, of Grar, looks out the window and he sees it's Chak Metzachek, whatever. And then he says, why didn't you tell me? Because I could have uh, pen Amut Alea. I could have died on her. Yeah. And then in English, he says, one of the people might lightly have lien with thy wife. Yeah. Lightly. <laughs> so they, well, I don't know why they added the word lightly in the, the slept with his wife, lightly. And thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. Because he's like, uh, what the fuck? Uh, you have this, yeah. uh, well, this uh, Lord that could have uh, punished us. And then I didn't know. So it's exactly the same story. Exactly the same, except that they were punished. In the Abrahamic stories, they were punish punished. They took, he said, it's my wife, it's my sister. And then bad things mm. in the Abraham story, they became barren, the, the women, right. it was like a bad things right. happened. And then they found out uh. that wh they asked themselves why bad things happened. We have this uh, great man uh, of uh, Yahweh Amelech. here, ah, okay. great yeah, man yeah. of Yahweh here. And uh, <laughs> they, they realized that they took the wife. And so again, there is also, so afterwards they're fighting over wells, who, who's this, uh, this well and that well belong to. So this is something we'll talk about more in the next episode, but it says, it gives us like a glimpse of what's important for these people. And they go and do the same trick with the names of the wells, like with the name of the, of the kings in yeah. the War of the Nine Kings yeah. that give them like bad names. Yeah. So like one of the wells is called Oshek, yeah. La Shok. In Hebrew, it's just like whatever, when you make a deal with someone and you just like, I don't know, if you cheat them, 
but you take more yeah. than than what you're supposed to take. Yeah, if you go to a marketplace and you ask uh, how much is that scarf, and then they tell you 100 euros and you pay 100 euros, you've been Na'ashakta. Na'ashakta, yeah. because it's actually five euros. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like one of the words that they fought over. And the other one is sitna. Sitna. Which is like hatred and devilry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the devil in Hebrew is Satan. It's like guttural hatred. Hatred. The devil in Hebrew is Satan, but sitna predates Satan, which yeah. is a character in Job later. Yeah. So it's uh, irrelevant. But sitna is like... It's relevant because it's the word hatred. It's, vehemently. it's relevant because this is the word that they later used to describe the devil character. Yeah, yeah the yeah. hateful, yeah, like yeah. Uh, you said, guttural, uh, visceral, 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 visceral. Abraham also fought about wells, and then they mentioned how Isaac becomes rich yeah. and respected, even though he's already supposed to be rich because he got all of all Abraham's yeah. uh, property. And we were told that he is rich and great. So it's just like the same as if he's starting over with we nothing. We told that he even sent all of his posse and al- unrelated sons and slaves to the east, to the east, in order t- for Isaac to receive the entire inheritance. Yeah, so it's just like starting over. So what happened between season one and season two? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly all the whales are <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Isaac is not rich. <laughs> and, uh, and even he's giving the names of the whales, the same names that his father yeah. gave. And again, yeah. they go to Be'er Sheva, Be'er, Well, Sheva, Seven. Because yeah. of the seven wa- so it's but ge- here it's not. Here it's because of the oath. Sheva, ah, it's also the same right. root as Shvua, which means oath. And he made a deal with Avimelech. They wanted to, because he's such a great person and blessed by Yahweh, they wanted to make a deal with him. They actually come and say yeah. to him. There's to a pact. This. Yeah, there's a pact. Abraham also had a, had a pact with Avimelech. And then the name of the well in which they made that pact was named Be'er Shiv Sheva because of the Shvu'ah. It could be the oath or it could be the seven. seven. With Abraham, it, With was, it seven was seven because yeah. there were seven uh, cows there yeah. that he left for it to see if, w- if Avimelech was, uh, was going to take them even though they don't belong to him. They're not even trying. Like when you picture Abraham, you have some stories in your mind and you have an image in, in your mind. If you think about Jacob, you know, if you're Israeli, if you l- read the Bible, you have some stories that you remember. You have Moses, you remember the story of Isaac. No, just the fact that he was binded. Yeah. It's, it's, it's super lame, super lame. And it's funny because either they made up entirely those stories in order to make a connection because there's a gap between the people of Abraham, who are more southerner, and between the people of Jacob. So if what scholars are suggesting that those two people were united by the feeling of the, the hole in the script, the plot hole. Yeah. How do we connect our father and yeah. our father? If it was like a conscious decision to create a character basically out of nothing and uh, reinsert it, that character retro or actively retrospectively in order to make that connection, it's really strange that they just repeated more of the same of the basically the same stories same stories it's I really st- strange even even for them for like ancient writing without any you know tradition of writing yeah, just make up a new story i'm sure you've heard a thousand okay i have a theory unsubstantiated theory i don't know what scholars think about it so abraham is of the south and jacob is more of the north the union is after the north is destroyed and they go south yeah so so the south they have the one who have the leverage it's their yahweh Mm -hmm. that uh, is become uh, that that becomes the the most important the prop the most prominent most prominent the only one that you're supposed to worship basically so maybe the connecting tissue between them it's hack they want him to be more like abraham than like jacob because jacob gonna see he's a weasel yeah He's not respectable at all. Mm. He's a liar, conniving bastard that screws over his brother. Yeah. Actually, that's a very good uh, yeah. hypothesis. Hypothesis. So like the middle one that is both of ours, he's more like ours. Yeah. So we're just going to take the same stories and just have them again. And just, I don't know, it's weird to imagine the audience listening and reading these stories and just like they not that they don't mind like i want to imagine how come the same stories exactly 
have an impact. I think it's easier to get into their heads if you establish the fact that they were believers. And also the world of the magical realm, a magical realm or a metaphysical realm or the metaphysic in day to day lives was believable. Even if people didn't see it in front of their own eyes, stories about this lady who did that. And, and also I prayed and then I got some uh, crops. Even now people uh, believe in those things. So if somebody ca- charismatic enough comes to your village and says uh, in those villages people did X and then they, their crops were like, that, were, were like that or they did Y and then Yahweh got mad at them. It's very believable. So if you are sitting, let's say, in an audience and you have like some kind of a reading of those stories, one next to each other, which I don't believe it was the case. I think if it was, it was, I don't think there were like mass readings of gathering, like here in, we have in the, the synagogues today that you have every like week, every week, parasha, every week you go to a different uh, yeah, in order. story in order and you over, over analyze <laughs> wow, it, wow, like wow. over analyze wow. it, like talk about fan fiction, <laughs> uh, obsess, uh, we wow. invented that. Uh, it's, I don't think it was like that in ancient times. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.